I waste no time, I suffer no fools. Frankie Alvarez, welcome to The Suspects. We need a preacher, and that man is Brother Loomis. I hold myself to a higher standard than what I did, and we need to do better. It sucks, you know, usually the twos, I know a lot of them. I didn't know one last time, and I didn't know this one. Yeah, I would definitely love to uh, play again in this division at some point. That was his first match ever. Let's not forget that. Uh, I haven't even gotten started. Hello, everybody, in movie trivia schmodown universe. This is such an amazing, amazing season. So here is why it is so important for Patreon. Patreon is the lifeblood of the movie trivia schmodown. It has been for a very long time. We are doing three pay-per-views versus, and that will be one match, one big match, the throwdown, also two big matches inside of the throwdown, and then at the end of the month, Battlefield. So that's five big pay-per-view matches, and guess what? If you are at the $10 level, you get all three of them. You're also going to get one commentary match a month. So let's say that uh, Rachel Cushing and Mike Kalinowski decide they're going to watch their San Diego Comic-Con match together, and they're going to comment on it. You guys will get that at the $10 tier it up. $20 and up. We are doing special Q&As with certain patrons. So Dan Merle just won a match. Well, if you're the $20 patron, the link will be sent out. You can join the stream and ask question right after his match. And this, I didn't even mention the exhibition. You get an exhibition match also. Exhibition that will happen once a month that you guys will get. Patreon.com slash Schmodown. Join today. It's all going to be worth it, but we thank you. We thank you for your support and everything that you have done. Now, go enjoy the match. Enjoy the program. Whatever you're watching on SEN, enjoy it, and we'll see you next time. Okay. No, this is going to be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Hey. Christian. Hey, hey what's hey. up? What's up, guys? Uh, DA Robert, really, really cool to see you. Hey, uh, thank you for calling me here. I'm, and before I'm whatever it is you guys want to talk about, I just wanted to first say thank you. Uh, really excited with everything the Schmodown has been doing with Skybound. It's just been elevated to such a, a different level now. And I, and I thank you. The fan base thanks you. And um, yeah, I just wanted to um, say 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 that. And I can't wait for you guys to see what we're doing in season eight. It's going to be incredible. Oh, man, we can't wait either. I mean, this has been exciting. I mean, we love having Skybound be a part of this. You've been doing great. DA, tell them. Come on. Seriously, honestly, coming out of the pandemic, like the way you took the Schmo down, made it digital, sort of the way you really sort of engaged with, our, with the fans and the audience, the way you put in the draft. Honestly, Christian, I don't know how you do it. You, you, you've been moving mountains to get this thing done. It's, it's really impressive. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, uh, yeah, it means a lot to me. And uh, yeah, so what, what can I do for you guys? Well, we've got some exciting news for you. Are you ready for it? Yes, please, please. All right, let's go. We've been working with this uh, this outside group. We're gonna, you know, given all the things that are on your plate and all the responsibilities that are coming on your shoulders, we figured that maybe you know you can have a little a little help. And we figured we'll bring this outside group to sort of come in and you know help help you sort of uh, structure things and you know work with you. Yeah, we mm -hmm. really want to take the schmo down and like supercharge it. You know, like just really get in there and kind of build it up even more from what you've already been able to do. That sounds yeah. great. When you guys say like supercharge and, you know, helping out, like you mean, like how so? Like just I'm still doing my thing, though, right? Like, you, like what do you sure. But like we just want to lighten your burden, like to get you get you somebody that can like help you lift the load from now on, you know, and right. like help you set goals and really sort of you know visualize what you need to be doing like on a daily basis, you know, that type of thing. Wait, but yeah. when you but when you guys say when you say set goals that 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 almost sounds like like I have a boss or something. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a great way of putting it. I'm glad you said that. Uh, a boss. That's exactly what we're doing. We're getting you a boss. Yeah, it's a boss. It's great. I, I didn't know that that was a thing that could happen. I mean, look, Christian, you really, you really should read your contract and read the fine print before you sign anything. That's fair. I've, I've, I've always had a problem with that. But the, the, the what, 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 what who's, who, who's my boss? What's my, who's my dude, 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 Christian, listen, yeah. you seem like you're really upset about this. I, yeah. I can tell you right now, just D, from DA, I'm going to speak for DA and I, you're going to be fine. You should be very excited about this. Let's just, we, we, let's just bring her in. We need to introduce you guys. You guys are going to get along great. It's going to be yeah. awesome. Just calm down. It's all good. Okay. It's all good. All right. What? what? 
Hi, Jamie. Hey. How are you? How are it's you? So, so good to see your guys' faces. Oh my gosh. DA, how are the kids? Give them my uh, love. I will. They miss you. They had so much fun playing with this weekend. They thought it was awesome. They can't wait oh to see God. you. I know. I can't wait. And also, Robert, how is the show going? My God, I cannot. I have to tell you, I really, I am so excited. I think that Amazon Prime is such a great fit. My God, it just looks awesome. Oh my gosh, Grace. It just, it means the world to me to hear that from you. Like, thank oh. you so much. We've been working so hard on this show and to know that you're excited about it. Like, it just really is so moving. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is great. I think you, also wait, great. you guys can't be buying this. Are, are you kidding me? I, 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 buying, <laughs> buying what? I, I can't believe that we got someone with this this amount of intellect and this amount of horsepower to sort of work on this. I agree. This is out of control. It's out it's of control. Not, man. Oh, thank you guys. That means so much. Christian, right? Christian, I'm I'm really looking forward to partnering with all of you guys. I'm just so excited to see where this goes. You, you're gonna, just love to see you guys getting along so well. This is fantastic. You're gonna love each other. I think uh, so too. So let me just to make this clear. So an outside group came out and now this lady is is my boss. Is that is that correct? Don't screw this up, Harlov. This is a good thing. You should be happy right now. You, you, I'm sure you guys will be yeah, able yeah, to I, we'll figure it out. It'll it'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right. I I guess I'll I'll talk to my new boss. So thank you to thank you, DA. Thank you, Robert. I I appreciate it. Yeah. So make it work. You both. Okay. How in the hell did you pull this off? What did you do? You know, Christian, you've always just been such a sweet, simple thing, you know, and you've been underestimating me from the beginning. And yet, even on your best day, you are 10 steps behind me. And now guess what? I'm the captain now. I'm the boss now. This is my house now. You work for me. And you know what? You're going to like it. I'm going to like it. Everyone's going to like it and get used to it because this is how it's going to go. Okay. It's, it, you know how this ends up. You know how this ends up. Do I? You know what, Christian? It's just like you said. I think you said it very well. It's season eight. It's war. Bitch. Everybody and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. What a season it's been already, and we're only man two, three weeks into this thing. It is season eight. It is war. I am Christian Harloff, joined as always by Mark Ellis. Mark, inner geek the match here, man. How you doing? Ooh, I love these because the competitors know so many of the answers, Christian, and you and I can barely pronounce the questions, but what a matchup it is today. You have the axe shredding John Humphrey. He's going to be taking on the 1920s weightlifter Beard of Saul, and I just am so intrigued by the knowledge that both of these gentlemen have in their head when it comes to inner geekdom. It's easy to answer a relatively simple, well-known movie fact, but when it's that specific in these categories, that that separates the winners from the all-time winners. Absolutely, and there's so much here when you think about it because John Humphrey, who obviously free-for-all legend from the first, the 2017 free-for-all, we know of the history of the Mad Hatter and what he did. He's the first ever MVP in the free-for-all history. But what he did last year was say, him and Greg Alba both said, no, 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 we're pretty damn good at this inner geekdom league. Of course, John Humphrey beating uh, Janine the Machine in the first round and then scrapping with the Barbarian and, and lost, but they showed that they were for real in the IG division. And Koi Jandrew, manager now, manager then, at the time said, I, I don't know how they're going to be, but I trust in the guys, and it was a good call in the gut of, uh, of Koi Jandrew. Now you fast forward, you, you switch over to the Den, and what 
the whole switch on what Kate Mulligan has done and said, I'm building from the ground up. However, she still went back with Saul, but this time Saul wasn't just the IG player that she happened to trade for. She was going all in on Saul as her number one guy. And it's a it's a good move when you think about it. He really, who is this guy? He's just a caller on Collider Live. He almost beat Brandon Hanna in that tournament, almost. And it's beaten him up ever since. Yeah, he's been really competitive in matches. And, you know, you look at the history of Saul, and Kate is going to the ends of the earth, the streets of New York, maybe literally the streets of New York, to pluck him out. But it's the den, lion is the theme, and he's got a lion's mane to boot. So I think that Saul is going to give John Humphrey all that he wants in this matchup today, possibly more than the Mad Hatter can solve. All right, so this is going to be a scrap. We know that the Den is looking for some points. This is worth a big three points here today. Uh, we know that the Quirky Mercs need some points. So we're going to see exactly how we got where we are right now with the Mad Hatter and the man simply known as Saul. I think people aren't going to come out of this tournament talking about Brandon. I think they're going to come out of it talking about Saul. This is the first match he has ever played in the Schmodown, and he stayed within three points. It's the beginning of you. I'm going to remember this one. It's the it's beginning of you. Welcome, everybody, to this 2021 season premiere of The Saw Show. We've got a very special guest tonight. John, not quite Greg Alba Humphrey. Wait, John Humphrey in the Inner Geekdom Division finds himself with the victory here. The quirky mercs are back. We're cheeky, we're sneaky, and we're ready to get freaky. And you might be wondering why I'm out here on the mean streets of Studio City. And I'm, I'm, I'm out here. I'm not running my mouth, man. Except for right now. But otherwise, I'm not running my mouth. John, I'm sure your bear riding a unicycle shtick still will go over swimmingly in that team's division you regularly make a mockery of. Do it for the yucks used to be one of the hallmarks of the IG division, but those days are long gone. And if you don't believe me, just stick around and watch. Who am I? Okay, who? Listen, what are you thinking for the wheel fighters, buddy, 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 buddy? Oh, yeah, I think those are good wheel fighters too. A little something wrong with the micro machine. Yes. It was quite the chantress. Well, hey, Shmoes. You guys caught me uh, sleeping on the Humphrey Saul match. Like y'all are sleeping on Humphrey. And that's the beautiful thing about my, my faction is everyone thinks they're only good at one thing. Everyone thinks they're one specific thing. He's all heart, he's all knowledge, and he cuts some of the best promos in quarantine. Me and Coy were talking before the match. He's like, you know what, Humphreys? I'm like, that's not my name. He's like, you know what? You got a great point that's not your name. Saul, I've done the one name guy thing before, all right? It's fun and all, but you got to commit. Calling you the Conor McGregor of Schmodown. What do you say to that? I have much longer hair. <laughs> I do think that we have found ourselves a new inner geekdom star in Saul. He clearly has the stuff to play, and he's got the competitive mindset necessary to get wins in this league. I learned more about the movie trivia showdown in my first two questions of my first match than I did in seven months of preparation. I feel fear all the time. Controlling that fear is how I'm able to do anything. I am so scared of Saul's potential that I did not want to be in a position where I was going up against him. So John versus Saul, winner, winner gets the last name. Get that last name. Get that hair, get your belt. I believe in you. I'm taking a risk here. Kneeling in front of another man over the phone, asking him to lose to me a movie tribute show. I won't have fun, but day. All the people watching this very special episode of The Saw Show, they're going to have a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Saul is a talker. Saul is a talker. And that's one of the things. The question is, can he back it up? Can he back it up? He showed that he came close to backing it up against Brandon Hanna, an experienced IG player. John Humphrey surely is an experienced Schmodown player, fairly new in IG, but yet he is coming in as a favorite as he is one-on-one, -on -one, and Saul has not won a just yet. 
Yeah, Christian, the Bible is littered with stories of Saul. In that book, he's going to Damascus, and then he gets knocked off his horse by a bright light, and he changes his name to Paul. Is John Humphrey that bright light, or is he going to change his name to Paul and usurp Saul's power? It's all on the line right now, here today. Plus, like you said, three big points. Three big points, and we are about to get going. Mark, are you ready? I, I just quoted the Bible. I mean, I paraphrased it. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Introducing first, representing the den with a record of no wins, one defeat. This is Saul. Saul is here. Saul, the man. Saul, listen, you've been talking up a storm about this match, saying that people were that, that counted you out last year. Well, they were doing it wrong. They were silly. They should have known. They should have seen what you did against Hannah. What's different from last year's Saul to this year's? Not a whole lot. Just an improved knowledge base and a laser-like focus. Look, I didn't know what I didn't know until I didn't know it. And there's no way I could have until I lost that match. From that, I learned more about the Schmodown in my first two questions of, of that match than I did in several months of preparation. And I've taken that, and I've never relinquished my drive. And I've been studying since that match. I've never taken, uh, I took a couple weeks off in late summer, but I've been just as focused as I've ever, and I'm, I am ready to go. Yeah, saw so the preparation helps for months on end, but last time we saw you, it looked like there was maybe some tech issues and you were frazzled and it might have gotten in your head a little bit. You seemed calm, you seemed collected. What was your day like initially before this? Were there tests run? Do you have a crew there? Is Geek Squad outside your place? No, I did it the same exact way. I figured, screw it, let's just go. I'm ready. Okay. I, I, I refuse to change. I am that rigid. I will not improve myself in any. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I had I have done a test run. I set up the camera and I, I, I moved it to the other side of the uh, the, uh, the study room, and hopefully that'll change that that'll fix the Wi-Fi issue, and I'll be a little more loose and not worrying about uh, my Wi-Fi router exploding. Yeah, seems calm. Seems relaxed, Christian. All right. Well, Saul has entered, and his opponent, representing the Quirky Mercs, with a record. Oh, one win, one defeat in the Inner Geekdom Division. He is the Mad Hatter, John Humphrey. John Humphrey is here. John, uh, look, man, you've been Hello. playing this game now for, shoot, this is uh, since season four, I believe. So do you find that the, is it more fun for you in the singles or free-for-all, or is it more fun in the IG division? I mean, this has been a blast, honestly, because I love a good broad section of trivia that just allows you to kind of zero in, and because what we do at The Real Rejects is like so focused on this stuff every day, it kind of locks into everything else that I'm focused on, so I feel like this has been a really fun just place to jump in and find, like kind of like Saul said, what I know and what I don't know, and uh, I feel like just IG in its weird way is helping improve me all around, so I'm excited. Yeah, Humphrey, what do you make of this Saul character? You're facing him, he's sort of an enigma, despite the fact that he loves talking about himself. Your take on Saul? Uh, I mean, I, I admire his hair game. I think his beard is incredible. I mean, I, I was just remarking to myself the other day that I can't grow a beard that long, no matter how long I let it go, which is why I reined it in for today, because I didn't want to scar everybody, so... uh you know, I mean, he's a fierce trivia competitor. I can't talk him down that way. And I mean, if you saw the intro, I'm I'm all about love today. So really, I just want to see what Saul can do. And hopefully we can have a beautiful union afterwards. All right. Well, John is here. And now we bring back Saul. Saul is in the room. Humphrey in the room. Saul, are you going to say something here or, are you, or you're good? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm beyond good. Let's, let's rock and roll. Fair enough. All right. Mark competitors are here. How do the rules of round number one go? The rules of round number one are as follows. Ten, yes, it is the inner geekdom. Ten questions in round number one. Each question is worth a point. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. 
I'll remind each competitor you have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the three round match. You're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself your time, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be utilized at any point throughout the match. You issue the challenge, we'll bring in your manager, they'll ratify and confirm that said challenge is taking place. Quick note to both competitors, we're not great at pronouncing any of these names in Lord of the Rings, so just bear with us. And Christian, with that warning out of the way, I think the water's safe to swim. All right, so Saul, are you ready? Ready. John, are you ready? Redward Fredward. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. All right, here we go, round number one. Question number one. First, in the realm of animated, what year saw the release of Ralph Basky's Lord of the Rings? Whew, we are going. I, I like having an animated category here. Yeah, there's some new changes to the Inner Geekdom this year, and we're excited yeah. to see exactly where the writers are going to take us and what realm and how many names we can mispronounce. Five, <laughs> four, three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Saul. 1978. Yes, sir. John. I'm dyslexic. 1987. <laughs> All right. So Saul goes up by one here as we get to question number two. 1978. Great year for Van Halen as well. We move on to fantasy sci-fi. Aren't these all fantasy? The category is fantasy sci-fi. Here's the question. Andrew Adamson directed what? 2005 fantasy film featuring the Pevensey children and the White Witch. All right. I mean, you get you get a lot of sci-fi fantasy in this, but I guess it's nice to distinguish, Christian. I think so. I think it's very nice, and it's yeah. and it's nice that you would bring that up. How nice that is! I'm a nice guy. You are a nice guy. <laughs> and we're gonna go five. It seems like you're killing time. <laughs> I was four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with John. The Chronicles of Narnia: The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yes, sir. Saul. Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yes, sir. And look at Saul. I got to appreciate Saul's camera this time around. I got to appreciate that he's throwing his answers behind him after he gets one correct. And we get to the next question. It's very David Letterman. All right, here we go. Next one. We Transformers. The realm of Transformers. Oof. Which actor who appears in the first three Michael Bay Transformers films returns in the last night as the character of former NST, NEST, what is Nest? The former Nest Commander and U.S. Army Ranger, William Lennox. Sounds like you love these movies, Christian. I like the animated ones. Uh, you and I saw the first one in the theater before Schmoes was a thing, and boy, were we excited. Before it, beforehand, yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, uh, hands up, hands down. And we start with... Saul. Josh Dumel. Yes. And John. Josh Dumel. We got it. Look at the score thus far. We have Saul up by one, three to two. All right. Next All right, one. Right. I'm from the south, so I pronounce it Duhamel. And <laughs> your next query is in the world of graphic novels. Graphic novels. Here it is. Tom Hanks and Tyler Hecklin appear in what 2002 film directed by Sam Mendez? Tyra's last name spelled H-O-E-C-H-L-I-N. Yes, it is, Mark. I wasn't just reading that. I'm the spelling the runner-up. You love to talk about that. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and John Humphrey. That would be Road to Perdition. That would be right. Saul. The Road to Perdition. Look at Saul. Look at Saul right now and has not missed thus far. Humphrey only down by one as we are four to three into our next question in the realm of Marvel films. Marvel. Who plays the character of Stick in Elektra? I don't know. If your nickname was Stick, would you take that as a compliment or an insult? Depends on the context. Hey, here comes Sticky. Yeah, see, that's a little... It depends. Five. A little insult. Right, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, Saul. Terrence Stamp? It is. John. 
Terrence Stamp. Got it. Nice little fake out there by the Mad Hatter. And we find ourselves still one point game. Great match thus far between the two competitors, Mark. And we get to our next category. That's right, Christian. It is going to be in the wild, wonderful world of Mixed Bag. Roll up the sleeves, reach our hand in there. Could be anything. Here it is for a point. Who plays the lead role of Max Walker in 1994's Time Cop? Now, if you got this one wrong, Mark, I don't know what I would say about you. Saw this movie opening day, uh, even though it was rated R and I skipped school, and I ran Five, into one of my professors. Four, three, I like that. Two, who was also cutting school. One, pens down, please. Pens down, please. And we start with John. Uh, this is a poorly attempted rape. I, I re-scribbled Hasselhoff, but... Ooh, that is incorrect. It, wrong it, anyway. is not, it is absolutely wrong. Uh, and Saul. One of the greatest Collider Live guests of all time, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Well, <laughs> well, correct on both answers. Correct no, on both answers. No, no, only one out of two there. <laughs> I think he's correct on both. So Saul finds himself now up by two. Saul's still perfect here. Six, four, as we get to our next question. <laughs> and we get to the Wizarding World. The Wizarding World. This is the one that the Mad Hatter was waiting for. The Wizarding World in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Which of the Weasley family is the first to go into the wall at platform nine and three quarters? Hmm. Okay. Difficult one. The writers throwing a little bit of a, a little bit of a mm -hmm. curveball here to the to competitors. So, honey, can we get you in front of the camera when you write your answer? Yeah. Thank you. Give you a couple extra seconds because I corrected your form. Five. Four. Uh, three. Could I ever repeat the question real yep. quick? Yep. First one. First one. In Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, which of the Weasley family is the first to go into the wall at platform nine and three quarters? That is John Humphrey's first repeat. I don't have the Black Mirror technology uh, where you can rewind what you just said, but I'm pretty sure I just called Saul Honey, so now I have to call every competitor Honey the whole season. That's right. All right. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Saul. Fred? It's incorrect. John? Uh, Molly? It's also incorrect. Looking for Percy. Looking for Percy Weasley. Percy oh, Weasley. On. And it was. It was I Percy. considered him. Can I get a half point? He's not an Percy. official Weasley. He's <laughs> still a Weasley. Weasley. Oh, I'm sorry, but he's in it. All right, here's, <laughs> the, here's the next one. When she wakes up, I'll ask Molly if she's a Weasley. Uh, your next question is in the world of swashbuckling adventure. Christian, we love these two categories last week, and we're loving them this week, too. Who plays Elizabeth Swan in the Pirates of the Caribbean series? And even though Saul missed on that one, he still John also missed, so he still sees himself with a two-point lead here, Mark. Yeah, it's, it's always important to rebound after that first miss, though, especially when you are on a roll. Five, four, three... Two, one. Pens down and John. Kira Knightley. Yes. Saul. Kira Knightley. Got it. All right. Seven, five. Saul still with a two point lead here as John's still fighting back. And we get to our next question. Number nine in the realm of the X Men. X Men. X Men. You'll find the characters of Angel, Jubilee, Nightcrawler, and Moira McTaggart in what X Men film? I don't know why you do this to torture me. X-Men. The movies and the comics are called X-Men. X the neighbors you need to borrow a rake from down the street are the X-Men. I don't think that the fact that you say Boba Fett and Duhamel, you get a thing. Five, four. Can three, you please repeat the question? Three. That's your first one. You. All right. Here you go. You'll find the characters of Angel, Jubilee, Nightcrawler, and Moira Metagart in what X-Men film? I want you to do this live. When we do a live match, see how the crowd reacts. They're going to love it because they know that it's going to get you. Or they're going to scream out, Duhamel. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. And we start with uh, Saul. What you got? Apocalypse? Yes. And John? <laughs> That's a funny way to spell apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Saul goes up by three there with the answer. It is now 8-5, eight, 8-5 five, eight, five as Saul finds himself up by three. But John made us laugh, so we might give him a point. Anyway. All right, what's yeah. the uh, – this, this is the 10th question. 10th question. Tenth We're question. doing bits for points now? 
I got a yet. Like You're still new. You're still new. He's been in longer than you. All right, what's okay. next? That's, that's for the fourth round today. Your final round one categories in the world of Superman and the question. Margot Kidder, Robert Vaughn, Pamela Stevenson, and Annette O'Toole have roles in what Superman film? I'm holding my host pose here, Christian. You see it? I do, but I have to tell you, I'm loving these questions thus far by the writers. What a great, great oh. job by the writers. Five, oh. four, three. I'm not a fan. Two, oh, one. Pens down, please. Pens down, please. And we start with John. John, what do you got? <laughs> Superman 2, obviously. That is incorrect. And Saul, what do you got? Superman 3. That is correct. So Saul right now sees himself Close. with a big lead. Starting to get a big lead here. And now, Mark, we are going to start off round number two. I know that you guys are pumped up. Well, get pumped up even more. I, if you've been watching anything I've been doing, you've, hear, you've heard me raving about Stereo. It's a brand new app. I absolutely love it. I've been using it every day. I've been interacting with you guys. And I know a ton of you guys are going to be doing Stereo's. Hell, some of you might be doing Stereo right now. What is it? Stereo app, it's got thousands of live social conversations going on at the same time with a wide range for genres for every interest. It's got news. It's got comedy. It's got sports. It's got Schmodown. It's got all of that. You choose whether you want to be a co-host of a stream or, uh, or you just participate as a guest and simply listen in on exclusive conversation questions. Uh, it, it's, it's super interactive. You click the share button to help people out. There's a clap button and you start to really listen in on conversation and get to interact with people that you normally won't, wouldn't be able to. It's really great. I love it. I've been addicted to it. Everybody on SEN has been. And it also is it's a one it's one thing where people always ask, how do I podcast? I've never podcasted before. I've wanted a podcast. This is so easy. You put earbuds in, you talk to somebody else, you talk to somebody in this community, you talk to somebody, one of your friends, you start your own thing, you hashtag in movies, you set it up, you set up your own stream, you know when to do it. It's incredible. SEN, the after show that we've been doing, uh, it's every day, 12 o'clock, it's just Brett and myself cutting up jokes and just being morons and, and it's been a lot of fun taking the questions from you guys and it's, it's starting to catch on and you can get ahead of the curve if you join all you got to do is you go to stereo.com slash christian harloff please head on over there stereo.com sign up follow me follow some of your favorite schmodown personalities go on over there it's really great you can you can interact with me and i'll hear you and i'll be able to place a voice with a name something that we've wanted to do for a very long time and now we can do it it's great it's live social conversation it's a amazing uh, once again you can be the co-host or you can just listen into a conversation uh join us you can join us for the shows that we do for sith council i do it every wednesday at 10 a.m for the brett and christian comedy show or just sen personalities you can join us every day monday through friday at 12 o'clock and then there's random days maybe like on a wednesday at like four o'clock i'll do a schmodown show so there's a lot of stuff already happening on that app so go ahead Check it out. Please go and join Stereo today. I promise you, you're getting ahead of the curve. Stereo.com slash Christian Harlow. Hello, movie trivia Schmodown fans. How are you? I'm Christian Harloff. I wanted to tell you guys about honey. You know what honey is? Not that honey. This honey. Everybody knows uh, or should know what honey is. You all shop online. Everybody shops online, especially nowadays. You, you shop online and, and you all see the promo codes. They come in. It's kind of taunting you. And thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes, gone. It's a thing of the past. So here is what Honey is. It's a free browser extension and it scours the Internet for promo codes and it applies the best ones to, that you can find to put into your cart. Honey supports over 30,000, you heard what I said? 30,000 stores online. It's, it's tech and gaming, fashion brands, food. And I'll tell you about that in a second because you know that's what this guy used it for. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites. Okay, this is how you should envision how Honey works. When you check out the Honey button, it drops down and all you have to do is apply coupons. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the price, the prices drop down. So for me, it was pizza. I wanted to see, I could, oh yeah, five bucks, Psh, gone. But I, but I need to get headphones. I need new headphones. These ones are, are, are running through. I know what it's gonna do. You, you can, it'll save me about 10 to $15 on headphones that I was looking through and said, okay, this, 
it, it found the coupon, $15 off a of headphones like that. It has over 17 million members already and over $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It is literally free and it installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you're going to be doing yourself a solid and you'll be supporting this show. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash trivia. One more time, that's joinhoney.com slash trivia. What an extension. All right. Thank you. Go watch the match. That's right, Christian. This is the Wheel Round. And though it's not a sponsor wheel, you can sponsor wheel if you want to. Just check out our Patreon for more details. This wheel does feature categories, however, in the world of inner geekdom. Each competitor gets a spin at that thar wheel. Once you settle on a category, use your mulligan if you want to, then spin again. And that was not a Kate Mulligan reference. That's a golf term. You will hear five questions in that specific genre. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, if you miss it, your opponent can steal it. So if you're not sure of the answer, use multiple choice. We give you four options, one of which is the correct answer, we think. And at that point, the value of the question goes down to a mere one point. Christian, Saul enjoying a suddenly sizable lead here after round number one. So it's going to be Saul's call. Would he like to spin first or defer to his opponent? I would like to go first, please. Are right, you going to go first? All right, Kate, you got 60 seconds to talk to Saul starting now. Hey, I don't. I mean, my heart swelleth. <laughs> you are uh, what we like to call murdering, and I hope you don't get arrested afterwards <laughs> for it. Uh, here's a few things that I love that you did. You took that JTE super smart, because guess what? Then you got it correct. Uh, also, thank you. Nobody needs to remember Percy Weasley. So thank you. That was, I actually, I'm right. happy about that point you missed. Do you know what I mean? How are you feeling? What do you need? And um, do you remember what TKO stands for? Cause you're about to do it. <laughs> I appreciate the confidence. I need nothing but uh, that wheel. Let's rock and roll. Let's do it. All right, here is the wheel. They have spoken, if you will. And here's the spin. As we saw, Christian already in Inner Geekdom matches this year. Some new categories lurking on that wheel. Find ourselves landing on Fantasy Sci-Fi. 60 seconds to talk it over with the manager if you want to take it, starting now. I think, I think we know what we do here, don't you? Spin again, please. Yeah, we're going to spin again. All right. Sure. Well, here it is. Whatever we get here, it's all it's going to take. We will find out exactly what it is. Saul right now enjoying a four-point lead. And here is the spin. Marvel. Marvel. That went well. Saul, you are going to get four, excuse me, five questions in the realm of Marvel, my friend. Are you ready? I am ready. Thank you. All right. Here we go. In Spider-Man 3... J. Jonah Jameson has to take pills and try to keep himself calm due to what? Multiple choice, please. Is it A, cholesterol, B, anger management, C, high blood pressure, D, anxiety attacks? Anger management. Is incorrect. John, for the one point steal. In Spider-Man 3, J. Jonah Jameson has to take pills and try to keep himself calm due to what? Is it A, cholesterol, B, anger management, C, high blood pressure, D, anxiety attacks? High blood pressure. Correct for one point steal. Woo! Big steal there, Christian. All right, here is the next question. Here is the next question. All right. Who plays General Hager in Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer? Andre Brower. That is correct. Two points. All right. Here is the next question. What Marvel film features supporting performances by Chris Zelka, Embeth Davids, and C. Thomas Howell? The Amazing Spider-Man. Yes. Two more points. All right. This is question number four. This is question number four. Who plays the character of Will Munson? The farmer who Logan helps in Logan. Eric LaSalle. Correct. Two points. And 
Finally, in Blade, 12 pure blood vampires are leaders of the house of what? Yeah, multiple choice, Five. please. Yes, you can. Is it A, Erebus, B, Aramis, C, Dorina, D, Cilia? Can I have the choices again, please? Yes, you get it once. A, Erebus, B, Aramis, C, Dorina, D, Cilia, spelled C-I-A-L-A. Is it A, Erebus? It is for one point. Ooh, Look at boy. Saul. What a maneuvering there for Saul. Sees mm -hmm. himself only losing one point as he now is up by 10. All right, Coy, you got 60 seconds to talk to John. Starting now. Hello. Uh, we are in a spot that we've been in before. You are the king, in my opinion, of the second round. This is where you shine. This is where you shine in all of your divisions. Uh, I want you to go into this confident knowing that. And we're not in a TKO position yet. We are just at a position of, like, we need to go into this with this round being your strength. How you feeling, man? I feel all right. I just I just want the world to know that I was trying to write down Jean-Claude Van Damme. As long as that's on the record, I feel like we can do the rest of this match. I didn't have time. You know, it was one of those things where you know it. It's coming back, but not all the pieces are there, so. It was more like interpretive dance on, on the board, and I'm okay with that, because that's our style at the Quirky Mercs. I respect it. Now, we yeah. know what categories we want in this wheel. We know which ones we don't. Uh, there's some certain ones I'm, I'm aiming for here, so let's make sure to assess that because of how important this round is to us. But no matter what, let's let us have fun with round two, man. It's very great. Hell yeah. All right, All right, let's get that wheel. Wheel's going up, and here's the first spin. Great steal, is. by the way. Thanks, bud. Round and round it goes. Will it settle on the Van Damme category? <laughs> oh. Okay, so. Spider-Man. This is just makes me happy this is on the wheel, but how do you feel about it? Because this isn't one we thoroughly discussed, but I, I feel confident if you do, but it's up here. How are you feeling? You know? It's not maybe the most confident category on the board, but I've seen all the Spider-Men I can at least get in the neighborhood, I think. And this is a category that I was looking forward to, to at least trying out, you know? So uh, I say, let's do it. I'd say it's in your upper 70% and let's play with the Spider-Man. We are gonna get five questions, Mark, in the realm of Spider-Man. Yeah, you're rallying all your troops against me, aren't you, Harloff? Okay, here we go. Two points, possible 10 points in this round could tie going into round number three. We're not there yet. Where we are is the very first question for two points. And that is in Spider-Man from 2002, what does Norman bring as a gift for Thanksgiving? Is there a rule against asking how like specific this is? Uh, <laughs> multiple choice. <laughs> Your options for the Thanksgiving is A, cranberry sauce, B, stuffing, C, turkey, or D, fruitcake. You have the choices one more time. This is your only opportunity to have that free of a JTE. Here it is. Is it A, cranberry sauce, B, stuffing, C, turkey, or D, fruitcake? Stuffing. Stuffing is incorrect, so we go to Saul for the steal. Saul, I'm going to give you the question and the options again. In Spider-Man from 2002, what does Norman bring as a gift for Thanksgiving? Is it A, cranberry sauce, B, stuffing, C, turkey, or D, fruitcake? A, cranberry sauce. You morons. No, it's fruitcake. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so you're both very smart gentlemen, and I didn't know it was fruitcake, but that is the answer. So we go back to John. For your second question in the world of Spider-Man, which Spider-Man film features supporting performances from Teresa Russell, James Cromwell, and Becky Ann Baker? Five, four, three. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. That is incorrect, Saul. Another opportunity to steal. And here's the question again. Which Spider-Man film features supporting performances from Teresa Russell, James Cromwell, and Becky Ann Baker? Spider-Man 3. That's a big, big steal because it's correct for two points, Christian. All right. Well, here is the next question, uh, Mark. 
All right, and it is. John, in Spider-Man 3, once Harry comes home after his accident, what present does Peter give Harry as a homecoming gift? <laughs> These are good questions, man. Uh, let's, let's hear that multiple choice. All right, for a point, is it A, scooter, B, helmet, C, a basketball, or D, camera? It's a helmet. It is not a helmet. So another steal opportunity for Saul. Here's that question. In Spider-Man 3, once Harry comes home after his accident, what present does Peter give Harry as a homecoming gift? And your options, is it A, scooter, B, helmet, C, basketball, D, camera? C, a basketball. He knows his Spider-Man 3. That's another steal. And Christian, we're leering on the edge of a big opportunity for Saul. So it's 18-6 at the moment with two questions left, correct? Two questions left on the board. So John's got to get some points here. Or the KO is on the table. And this year, KO is me. A plus one for the Den and a minus one for the Porky Mercs. All right, here we go. All right, and here we go with your next question in the world of Spider-Man. Who plays Liz Allen in Spider-Man Homecoming? Multiple choice. All right, and your multiple choice options are... Is it A, Zendaya, B, Anjuri Rice, C, Tiffany Eppinson, or D, Laura Harrier? Angry Rice? That is incorrect for a steal that would win him the match, Christian. So, who plays Liz Allen in Spider-Man Homecoming? Is it A, Zendaya, B, Angry Rice, C, Tiffany Eppinson, or D, Laura Harrier? D, Laura Harrier? Can you hear me? I can hear you. D, uh, D, Laura Harrier. That's correct. Are you waiting for me? Yep. And your winner by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is Saul. Saul takes a bite of an apple as he knocks out the Mad Hatter and gets a Four points, four points for the Den and the Mercs see themselves lose a point as this is a massive, massive win here for Saul. All right, Saul. <laughs> I am so sorry I underestimated you. I said TKO. I didn't need the T. Oh, shame on me. I'm so sorry. No Final problem, score boss. there. Final score oh, there we is 20 to 6. 20 to 6. Saul has the victory 20 to 6 as we see ourselves look kate i gotta ask you here um you and i've had conversations with you whether it was on sen or whether it was uh, an off camera and you had all the chips on saul this season you said look i know this guy is going to be a powerhouse i know he's going to get his stuff right you look like you know what you were talking about so where did all the confidence come from the bearded maniac because i know the way he prepares I know what's in his head. I know how much he cares about this, and it doesn't hurt that he can cut a promo. <laughs> we're coming. We're coming for that belt. Okay, but it. Saul, how far do you think you can take this knowledge and your variety of produce that you have in your apartment? I mean, we've done big live events that are headlined by Inner Geekdom before. Can you see yourself one day on a stage, actually holding that belt? I wouldn't be here right now, Mark, wasting your time if I didn't think that I could be the champion of the Inner Geekdom. And when it comes to produce, I got this great food stand right by the place. Oh, this guy, he's always hes always got primo cuts, so don't worry about that. I'll have plenty of that. Too. Good to know. Yeah, but Saul, look, man, this is the, this is some, the same thing. You, you've you tweeted out pictures about how hard you've been studying, that this year you were taking this really serious. John Humphrey's a really good competitor, and you just kind of blew through him right now. So how are you feeling kind of starting out this uh, this season? It's, it's, it's um. 
You know, I don't want to sound like a, I don't want to sound like a I don't want to put on like any sort of faux humility, but like I'm annoyed. There's, there was points on the board that I left out there. I don't I don't appreciate that that I did that. Um, I didn't have the greatest training camp coming into this match. That will be rectified uh, at the next opportunity I get to do that. And uh, nothing spectacular to me happened here. I knew I was this good for a long time. I'm just glad some people maybe got a glimpse, a small glimpse of it. And, and um, you know, this was just me getting back to the starting line. I'm now one and one, and that was the goal. And now having a winning record would be the goal. And then we're going to build from there. Again, nothing spectacular or amazing happened here tonight other than me just getting back to the starting line with the rest of this division in that pursuit of uh, chasing whoever's wearing that belt. Let me ask you a question, your last question for you before we let you go. Um, coming up here on March 17th, you got Brandon Hanna versus Eric Zipper. <laughs> How bad right. do you want to face Brandon Hanna again? Tell me. I, I want it more than I want my next breath. I want it. There's, there's, it is, it is, you know, I have a vision board with this kid's head on it. All right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will extinguish Brandon Hanna. I know it. Most of the Schmodown knows it. Brandon Hanna sure as hell knows it. He knows I'm coming. He knows his inner geekdom career has to collide with me. And I promise you, that's a feeling that he's not happy about. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations to the Den. Thank you. Massive four points here with the knockout. Massive. And Massive. taking away a point from the Mercs. So again, congratulations, Kate. Congratulations, Saul. And Saul, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the battlefield pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. All right, Mark. So look, this was a uh, this was a statement by the Den. This was a statement by Saul, um, and and now you, you, man, and he's he's putting himself right in a position to say, "I'm I am for real." You cannot look at that and say, "Wait a minute, Saul's gonna Saul's gonna hang with these guys." Yeah, I mean, and I think that if currently in our Skybound merch store, if we had offered Brandon Hanna themed vision boards, I think a few of those would be flying off the shelves. I think people are engaged by Saul. They may not fully understand the mystery, the enigma that is him, but I think he's probably won some fans today. And look, for John Humphrey, sometimes it doesn't break your way. He got a tough slate of Spider-Man questions, and when Saul knows those movies that well, it's very tough. You give up an opportunity to steal. Saul capitalized. Hence your knockout. John Humphrey still a player to be feared in the movie Trivia Schmodown. Speaking of which, John Humphrey and his manager, Koi Andrew, here right now. Seasons in, I feel like I've gotten a gauge to be able to at least level myself back out. So, I mean, some days you just don't get the questions you want. And some days this, especially Inner Geekdom, illuminates just how much closer you need to look at the specific details of the movie. So, again, you know, uh, there are some ways in which this game in and of itself inner geekdom is very formidable and uh, i felt a little bit of that today but mostly uh, i'm just glad to be back in and sort of swinging again and now i know how, how, where i gotta work <laughs> so yeah coy you know you look at a john humphrey and he seems like the most calm relaxed player you could ever want to come across but you know players even the sweetest ones have an ego so how do you stroke that a little bit coming off a tough loss like this is this a study this match again and again or is it just a burn the game film let's move on to the next match uh, i think we rebuild i think we look at you know the energy victims evolution and the shmodom's evolution as a whole and we look at how we study and we kind of I'm not, I don't think burn it down, but I think acknowledge what things have worked for us in the past, disregard things that haven't worked for us, and build on the successes, not the failures. We're a very win or learn faction. That doesn't mean we ignore our failures, but we don't focus on them. So I wouldn't be like, only watch Spider-Man films the next six months or else. But I will be like, hey, we clearly saw this is our weakness. We know your strengths already. Stay fresh on those, but let's focus over here as well. So I would like add Spider-Man into the repertoire. I would say like we stack this a little higher in the great equalizer that is the Schmodown. But I, I'm never gonna judge a player's knowledge of anything and I'm never gonna scrutinize because that's that's not how we do with the Mercs. I'm still proud of John. I still think that this would have gone a very different way if the, the wheel, which is fate in itself, spun a different way. Uh, I still am just as confident in having drafted him and I still can't wait to manage him again. Well, thank you so much for the interview here, gentlemen. Once again, John didn't go your way, but we're, exi we're excited to see you back in the league. As always, always great to have your presence in the league. Koi, same with you. We'll see you very, very soon. Obviously, you have a big match with Bibiani and uh, and Paulo Yama coming up in one of the pay-per-views in just a little bit here. So congratulations again for coming back, for having a great... I love the, the camaraderie that the Mercs have, and it's good to see you back. So thank you very much, both gentlemen, and we'll see you next time.
look, man, this is this was a statement by Saul. No, uh, no if and buts. It, it's a statement by Saul. He he said that he was here. And I have to say, when you have the wrath of Saul, and I think when it's when you get under his skin or when he's coming after you, he'll kind of get you with the with the with the tongue and say, and say certain things to you that just cut you down. He didn't do that with John Humphrey because I don't think that's the kind of player the rival he has with John Humphrey, but now he's added something else to his repertoire and that is serious serious knowledge. Saul's a dangerous player right now. Yeah, Christian, as a wise man who collects pigeons once said, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. And we saw that with Saul in round number one. That's what I go back to is that he was on a roll, missed a question or two, but was able to pick himself right back up and get back on the biblical horse and ride his way to a knockout. And so I think that this has put the rest of the inner geek, all of the schmodown for that matter, on notice that Saul, he's, he's a fun character, he's interesting, but he can also beat anybody at any given time, given the sample size that we now have absolutely and the den is still making statements so much happening here this week this is just the first match on wednesday well guess what on thursday that's right tomorrow you've got the debut of somebody i am very interested to see brother lomas what is this character going to be all about i have no idea and he is going up against equally just as big of a character in frankie the animal alvarez the finstock exchange versus the usual suspects that goes down tomorrow 2 p.m on this channel and then on friday hold on to your butts for this singles matchup former Teams champion, two-time teams champion, the youngest champion of all time, Chance the Cobra Ellison goes up against former teams champion, Brendan the Kid Meyer. That happens this Friday, 2 p.m. And by the way, all these big pay-per-views we're doing, you guys can get them. You have the $10 patron. We're doing three a month. $10 patrons, you get the exhibition matches. You get all the special Q&As we're doing, but you get all three pay-per-views. Can't do the $10 a month? No problem. The Schmodownlive.com, $5.99. You get one of those, and we have the big event coming up in just two weeks. That's right. Who's it going to be? I'm about to tell you. We have the undercard, William the Beast Bibiani facing Paul Oyama. Prime time. Two former singles champions going head to head. And then in the main event, the Star Wars Championship of the World is on the line. Andrew the Hunter Dimolanta finally gets his chance at Alex Damon. Can he do it? That's right. Alex Damon going for that fifth, fifth title defense. Only the Patriots have defended more. Can he do it? We're going to find out on that pay-per-view on Friday, March 19th. That's the Schmodown Patriots. The New England football Patriots right. only defended their title once. And so, Christian, a whole lot to look forward to this month and really this entire season. It's still very young, but war is afoot. And you and I, pal, we're just reveling in it. All these great comments that we've gotten from fans, all the engagement we've gotten on the Facebook page amongst other social media outlets. So it's just starting for Season 8 here at the Schmodown. That's right. For Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yo, Bateman, it's me, again, calling you, again. Where are you, man? Call me back. Yo, Bateman! Where's the boots? It's Guy, bro, where you at? <laughs> Bateman! Where's the belt? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shaky hands. Uh Bateman. Bait. What the hell is this guy? Ben. Where? Hello? I know you're here. Drew? Yo! What the hell? I've been calling you for like hours. Where have you been? I've been trying to get hold of you for days, for weeks. Let me up. God. Ow. Let me up. What are you doing here? I don't think you know what you're, what are you, shut up. Just listen to me, dude. We can win. I know how to beat Mance, okay? Cameron Diaz, all right? We put that on the wheel. He won't know what hit him. And then it's action to the belts, baby. Scott Mance. Yes. I don't think that you understand what I'm telling you, okay?
I don't think that- uh, uh, sh Just shut up for a second. Okay, Bateman, I need you to get your together, all right? I need you to get it together right now, all right? Get dressed and meet me at Collider, okay? Why would we go to Collider? Why would we, to beat Trek? How many times do I have to repeat myself? You don't answer your phone. You're not listening to me talk. Where have you just, been? Where have you, shut up, Ben, stop. Just stop thinking so, okay, look. I'll carry in matches, I'll carry outside of them. Just get dressed, let's go, okay? Team Trek, where's the belts? Champions. Guy, man. Why aren't you wearing a mask? Why does everyone keep saying that?